Welcome once again to our daily reflections. We are in the Monday of Holy Week. Uh, before I begin reading the Gospel text and taking you through this reflection, I just want to remind you, those who join us for the Holy Eucharist every day, that this week on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday and on Holy Saturday, the services uh, will be broadcast live from St. Jude uh, Church, Malat East at 6 p.m. We have to have the services at 6 p.m. in view of uh, the curfew imposed by the Maharashtra government, which begins at uh, 8 p.m. So do join us for our services on Monday, Thursday, Good Friday and Holy Saturday. Uh, just to inform you, the Easter Sunday morning Mass will also be broadcast live at 9 a.m. But for now, we are in the Monday of Holy Week. And our text today, if you have your Bibles open, is taken from John chapter 12, 1 to 11. I'll read the text for you and with you. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served and Lazarus was one of those at table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet and then wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, the one who was to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and believing in Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. So betrayal is written all over the next three days and Judas the betrayer uh, will be at the heart of many of the Gospel passages. But then again, and this is what I want to say to you, it all depends on what you want to see this week. Do you want to see betrayal or do you want to see love? Because within the Gospel text from today right up till Easter Sunday, we will also see people of faith, people like you and me who love the Lord, yet, as we know, we struggle. People like Peter and John and Nicodemus and Veronica, Simon of Cyrene, the women who followed Jesus, Mary, the mother of Jesus. And then, of course, uh, there is the great hero of today's Gospel, Mary of Bethany. Most likely the reader of today's gospel will tend to breeze over the text and settle on the Judas interaction which you see in the latter part of the gospel. He seems somehow to get our attention, the Lord's betrayer, 30 pieces of silver, the man who tainted the word kiss. When you look carefully, and please do look carefully, there is another character whose most singly citizen would really get um, that's nice kind of nod from us and she is Mary of Bethany and she deserves much of our admiration and much of our attention. What really do we know about Mary of Bethany? For starters, we know that she loves Jesus and she loves at his feet. When the Lord visits her home, she's at his feet while Martha, if you remember in Luke chapter 10 verse 39, complained away. When her brother Lazarus died, she too with her sister tells him, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. And then watch very carefully the text of John chapter 11, 32. She is at his feet. Watch where she is today. 
no prizes for guessing. Once again, we are told in John chapter 12, verse 3, she is at his feet. Now, it was traditional for the slave of the home to wash the feet of the master when he returned. This job could also be performed by the woman of the house if the family did not own a slave. And Mary performs this humble task, but she takes this humble task to another level. The Gospel of John puts Bethany in the spotlight again. The first time, if you remember, we are Bethany in John's Gospel is in chapter 1, verse 28. It is John the Baptist who is preaching and we are told in Scripture that this takes place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. But in John chapter 1, John also tells us that he is unworthy to tie the thongs of Jesus' sandal. I want you to remember that. Unworthy to tie the thongs of Jesus' sandal. Now, many moons later, we are back in Bethany. It is in Bethany that a woman who has chosen a spot at the Lord's feet is found worthy not only to untie his sandals but to anoint his feet with costly perfume and wipe it then with her hair. To many in the room, such an act must have been bizarre, wasteful and even unthinkable. And Judas led the pack in such thinking. But Mary of Bethany has anticipated a much-loved ritual in the church. She has washed the Lord's feet long before Jesus himself did this for his own disciples. But there is more to it than meets the eye. For the nose, as it were, now kicks in. We are told that Mary used a costly perfume made of what is called pure nard. And the house, as scripture says, was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. I want you to see the unmatched generosity as Mary literally runs to the corner of her treasures and brings out a pound of costly perfume. That would be 453.592 grams. That's uh, what is equivalent of a pound of costly perfume. Now, I want you to think of yourself running in to get a bottle, and I did a little bit of research some time ago, a bottle of Clive Christian's Imperial Majesty. It's one of the most expensive perfumes in the world, I'm told, retailing at uh, $215,000 for just 16.9 ounces. And then you bring it out to pour it on Jesus' feet. I mean, just the thought is unimaginable. Mary did exactly that. We are told in scripture, and Jesus himself says in chapter 12 verse 7, that she had bought it and it cost her 300 denarii. 300 denarii was a year's labor for this perfume made from the extract of spikenard, which in the scriptures is also called nard, and which is an aromatic amber-colored essential oil. It is derived from nardostish, uh, uh, jatmansi, it's a flowering plant which grows in the Himalayas of Nepal, China and India. Now, I want you to focus on this. Compare now the generosity of the perfume of a disciple to the stench of a betrayer. The perfume of a disciple to the stench of a betrayer. Judas' greed barely solicits a line for a response to his condemnation of her action. True enough, Jesus rebukes him. Leave her alone. Mary today stands vindicated. She goes down in history as the woman who loved much. Today, I want to make an appeal to all of you who um, watch this. Uh, with no condemnation on anybody or no judgment on anybody, we need to ask ourselves regularly, how much do we give for the Lord, to the Lord, and to our churches? And while the widow's might is much loved and much appreciated, have we moved on to being far more generous? Uh, many uh, of the Pentecostal churches demand 10% demand of one's salary. Here in Mumbai, in the Catholic Church, we request and ask for 1%. And you need to understand that much of this money goes towards charity, towards supporting the the church, its administration, and that's a lot. Support your church. 
just as Martha and Mary supported Jesus in their love for him with Lazarus, just as Mary just poured out uh, her love, do the same. We need to have a generous church, not a church that constantly judges and criticizes because that doesn't help. And I say this especially in this time of pandemic to those who can share. Please reach out to your church, reach out to your priests and ask them how you can be an instrument of love in these days. I was deeply touched yesterday by my parishioners who decided to celebrate every Palm Sunday as the day of, as they call it, Father Warner's Day. I was a little uh, touched by the action. And they said, we would like to remember you, Father, even though you leave our parish, by uh, instituting this day. But what I loved more was not that they had a day for me, but what they did with that day. Yesterday, eight communities cooked meals in their little homes, went out on the streets, and generously gave. I know that many of my parishioners here in Malad East struggle financially. And for them, in their own struggle, to give and feed the poor on the streets is, can be only compared, in, to my mind, to the generosity of the love that Mary had for Jesus. And so, let us pray. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God, our loving Father, in this, this Holy Week, I want to praise and thank you for your generosity. For had you not been generous with us, you would have never given us your son. You gave us the best. You gave us what we most needed. You gave us the apple of your eye. And you gave him not so that we may just be honored by his presence, but that we may be redeemed by his person. Jesus redeems us. He ransoms us. And this week, in this holy week, we recall his great love. I want to pray today and thank you for all those who continue to generously love and support their church. Generously love and support the poor. Generously run to their little corners of their homes and bring out the best. Lord, I want to pray for these people. So many of our benefactors this year to our little parish in St. Jude. I want to thank you for them. They who made this year for our people a beautiful year in spite of the struggles in the world. Teach me also, Lord, to be generous with my time, to be patient, to be loving, to be kind, to be understanding. Lord, give us this week, give us your presence, that we may feel you, that we may enter this holy week understanding the suffering that you went through in our own little way, by bearing our own little burdens, our own struggles. Bless us this week, Lord. We need you more than ever. Bless our city of Mumbai. Bless every city of all our viewers. But especially our country, once again, going through a difficult second wave of this pandemic. I want to pray for those who are in hospital. I want to remember Joanna in a special way. I want to pray for her, for Clifford, and for their baby. For all those who are in hospital, I want to pray for Dominic from our own ashram who is in hospital. For those members of our community in the ashram who are sick. I want to pray for all those who, Lord, are fearful because of COVID. Take care of those who might go hungry tonight. Move our hearts to feed those who struggle for a decent meal. Open our hearts, Lord. Touch our hearts, Lord. Let generosity flow through us. 
make us instruments of your love. Bless me, Lord, as your priest. Bless all our online viewers. And no matter what time of the day they may be watching this, may they experience your grace and your blessing. We make this prayer in your loving name. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to make a, a little request to all of you. Many of you know that this Sunday, this coming Sunday, Easter Sunday will be the last day that I will be broadcasting the Eucharist live. Remember that I will continue to do these gospel sharings. I also plan to have a little uh, time of praise and worship once a week for young people, which we will also broadcast live. If you'd like to support this ministry, uh, I want to make an appeal to you to reach out to me. You can um, send me a WhatsApp message on uh, 98202-42151. If you're dialing or WhatsApping us from um, abroad, uh, you need to add the India code, which is plus 919802-42151. More than anything else, I keep making this appeal. Do subscribe to our channel. Do share this, especially with young people. Yeah, you don't know how their hearts may be moved just by listening to scripture and letting God do the rest. God bless you. Have a blessed day. Have a blessed Holy Week, everybody.